Hello, welcome to Diego Knows. I'm Diego, and today we're going to talk about uh, the Book of Boba Fett, which just came out on Disney Plus the other day. I got a chance to see episode one, and uh, I liked it. Uh, I, I don't think it was it was it was great or anything like that, but it was it was decent. Uh, I have a, a long history with Boba Fett. He's my favorite Star Wars character, obviously, and uh, I, I've always liked the character. I wish he hadn't been evil. You know, I kind of wanted him to be a good guy. You know, because he was just so cool. This was. He was cool. To me, he was cooler than everyone else. He was cooler than Darth Vader. He was cooler than Luke. Cooler than Han. You know, I mean, Boba Fett was the guy. That was my guy on Star Wars. That's the guy I liked a lot. And uh, I liked uh, Tamora Morrison's performance of Jango Fett in Attack of the Clones. I think he did a really good job. And uh, uh, I liked uh, I liked that they uh, actually liked the fact that uh, George Lucas uh, redubbed all of uh, Boba Fett, the original actor's voice, with Tamora Morrison uh, for the uh, the original trilogy. So uh, now when you watch Empire Strikes Back, it's Tamora Morrison's voice you hear speaking Boba Fett's lines, and not the original actor. I forgot his name. Uh, so I think he did a good job as Boba Fett. Um, when the show opens up, uh, it opens up with Boba Fett in the, back, in the back to tank. I guess he's healing from the injuries that he received in The Mandalorian Season 2. He doesn't, know, he doesn't know Luke is back. Uh, he missed that part. He left before Luke showed up in, in the season finale of Mandalorian. Uh, so he's there with his sidekick. Uh, I forgot her name, but she she played May in um, in Agents of Shield. Uh, so he's having flashbacks. He's remembering his past, his youth when his father died. Jango Fett died. He was decapitated by Miss Windu. Uh, he remembers uh, Kamino, the the water planet where all the clones were made. And then of course, uh, you know he uh, he got he got thrown <laughs> he got thrown into the uh, the Sarlacc pit in, in Return of the Jedi, where we all thought he died in there because the the beast. Obviously ate him. And we saw it on camera. It ate, it ate him. You know, so so we thought he was dead. Uh, well, the episode opens up with that. So he's actually in the Sarlacc pit, being slowly digested. Um, and uh, he sees a stormtrooper over there who's already dead. He's been there for a while because his armor is eaten through. And he manages to pull the oxygen tube out of there and pump it into and put it into his, into his uh, helmet so that he can breathe. Because he's not dead yet, but he needs air. Or he's going to suffocate long before he gets digested. So he does that with the air in his body now. He manages to activate the, the, f the flamethrower on his wrist and he burns his way out of there. So that, and then he, then he like digs himself out. Oh my God, can you imagine what that must have been like? You know, in a desert, dig yourself out of a Sarlacc pit in that armor. You know, insane that he made it. Uh, so that's, and now we know, okay, so that's how he survived. We all knew he survived. He was way too popular to die. Okay, we all knew that he was going to be stay dead. You know, they brought him back in the novels. You know, um, so we knew he was dead. You know, he was way too popular. Uh, a, a lesser character without tell they would have died, <laughs> but not Boba Fett. He's way too popular. Uh, so, um, so they brought him back, uh, and he survives it. Uh, then he gets. Um, then the Jawas, um, uh, they 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 mug him. Basically, they take away his armor. They, they strip him of his armor and leave him there with just his bare clothes on. Uh, so now we know how um, that one guy uh, got Boba Fett's armor in, in Mandalorian Season 2. Now we know how we got it. He, he got it from the Jawas. The Jawas got it off of Boba Fett. But they left him alive. They knocked him out, but they left him alive. So he's just sleeping. He's sleeping there all day, all night. And then finally the Tusken Raiders grab him. And they tie him up and they take him back on their Bantha, back to their little hut, you know, where they all live with those, their masks on. You know, we don't know what they look like. And he's a prisoner there. He tries to get away. They capture him. They recapture him. One of the Tuscan Raiders, who's obviously a female, beats the crap out of him, you know, and then he's tied up again. And then they take him out to go look for water in the desert. And he happens to see a bunch of raiders. I guess they're uh, Job of the Hutt's raiders attack this family and, and kill them and take all their water, um, which is an echo to what happens to Luke's uh, aunt and uncle in, in, um, in New Hope. And then they go out in the desert and they accidentally unearth um, some four-armed Goro-looking creature from Mortal Kombat, and they fight him. Boba Fett uh, kills the beast with his chain. He, he chokes him out, and they bring him back to um, to the village, the little hut, the hut village where the where the Tuscan Raiders live, and they give him some water. I guess he's earned their respect, you know. So that's the backstory of of what happened to Boba Fett. That's all in his past. Those are all his memories that he has. That's how he survived it. Uh, he ended up with the, with, um, with the Tusken Raiders. They took care of him. They respected him after he killed that big monster, saved all their lives. You know, 
Now, what, what I'm seeing right now is Tamora Morrison looks like he's, well, he's older. You know, he's got the bald head. He's got the big scar across his head, which is fine. Um, I never, I never considered Boba Fett to be like a handsome man or anything like that. But um, he just looks like he's, I don't want to say out of shape, but he just looks like he's beat up on life. You know, when I think about Boba Fett, I think of this guy. I think this lean, mean assassin. You know, there's no business guy. Look at it. See? See? What if he doesn't survive? He's worth a lot to me. He's no good to me dead. You see? This is like a badass type guy. You know, this is like a guy who is all business. You know, he's the best bounty hunter in the galaxy. He's got a reputation just like Darth Vader's got a reputation. Just like the Jedi had a reputation. You know, everyone in space knows who the fuck this guy is. You know, when you need someone caught, you send him. Okay, he's the best. He's the best bounty hunter in the galaxy. Like his reputation precedes him everywhere he goes. But not here. Here he's just like, he's just like this tired, washed up, beat up old guy. He's just like, oh God, like he, he, he can't really fight. Now maybe they're just, they're fooling us because this is the first episode. Uh, what we see of him in the past is he's dehydrated. He, like I said, he just sur he barely survived the Sarlacc pit. He's, he, and he couldn't even defend himself against the Jawas. These little, the little Jawas that, that took his armor off of him. He couldn't even defend himself against them, much less against the stronger Tusken Raiders. You know, they're barely feeding him. You know, he's just tired and he's worn out. He wants to get out, but he doesn't really seem very strong. He, he's not hes not at peak strength, you know? So he's kind of like just not really much of a threat. Like it's a miracle that he he manages to kill that creature with the, the forearms. You know, like I, I really don't know how he did it. He wasn't very strong. He, he was easily intimidated, easily pushed around. Um, his, his one attempt to escape was very pathetic, you know, and just... I just didn't see him as being like a like a like a serious threat, like a serious force to be reckoned with, you know? Like he's supposed to be Boba Fett, you know, and he's like just like this worn out, like I can't fight you anymore. Like this woman Tuscan Raider easily kicks his ass. He tries to fight her, but just like barely tries to fight her. Maybe it's because he's undernourished, because he's dehydrated, he's tired. Maybe that's it. Maybe that's where they're going with it. Maybe he's gonna get his strength back later on. Uh, and we'll watch him get that. But now uh, but this is all in the past. This is all his memories when he's in the back tank. When he's out of the back to tank, he's sitting there in Jabba's palace and all these people are, are paying him tribute. They're giving him money because he's the new Jabba the Hutt. You know, uh, the, one of the, um, I guess the assistant to the mayor uh, of uh, Moss, not Moss Eisley because that's where the cantina was, but Moss, uh, Moss something else. Uh, they sent him there and he's expecting tribute, but the guy, the emissary does not have tribute. In fact, he's saying, no, you need to pay tribute to me. Like, oh, okay. So he lets him live. He's okay, I'm going to let you go with your life. You know, and he decides to go over there himself with his, you know, partner, May. You know, I don't know what her name is. I'm sorry. She just didn't make that much of an impression. You know, tough, strong, female in armor in Star Wars. Yeah, couldn't you just name off like 20-something different characters? Yeah, well, she's one of them. All right, um, he's there. Now, something I want to say real quickly about, about the uniform. Like, see this? See this outfit that the Boba Fett? This, this is the Boba Fett outfit. Now, you see how underneath the green and, and, and uh, tan armor, underneath there, he's got this, like, this ivory-colored bodysuit that he wears underneath the armor, okay? He wears it on his leg. I mean, he's covered in it, okay? And then the armor goes on top of that. This Boba Fett, uh, Timur Morrison Boba Fett, does not have that. He's wearing like this black, like wool thermal underwear. That's not even, it's not tight. It's loose fitting on him. Okay. It's loose fitting. It's not tight. Okay. So it bunches up around the neck, around the arms, around the thighs. You know, it looks like thermal wear that you would wear when it's, you know, 20 below outside. Okay. He wears that and then he puts the armor on, on top of that. So he doesn't really look like Boba Fett. Okay. Like see here, like you see how thin his neck is compared to the helmet. That lets you know that the guy underneath the suit is, in phys is physically fit. He's not fat. Okay, he's, he's, he's a thin, muscular guy underneath this suit. You can see that because of the neck. You see how the, the neck is thinner compared to the head? Okay, see how the shoulders are wider? Okay, you see that? So you can tell this guy is physically fit. Okay, you see how, how his, his, his waist is, is narrow? Okay, so this guy is, is an athlete underneath the, the armor, okay? Timur Morrison's like under undersuit is this black like wool thing. It looks like it's wool, 
and it's very thick and baggy. So he's got like it looks like he's like got like a double chin, like a black double chin. It's not it's not ivory colored. It's black. So right there, the the, the uniform, the costume is off right there, and the undershirt is baggy, especially around the neck. So it looks like he's fat, like he's got a double chin, he, with the helmet on. It looks like he's got a double chin because it's so baggy, you know. Also, where where see here where's this this white this bluish ivory color? Okay, that's all black now. The undershirt's all black. The arms are all black. Uh, he cleaned up this armor so it's not craggly like it is here. Um, and there's no there's no rocket pack on his outfit. Okay, there's no cape that he wears on his outfit. And I'm just gonna say this right now. Okay, this bothered me in Mandalorian season two, and it still bothers me. Okay, you see here, see his butt right there. Okay, do you see a dress? Because I don't see a dress. Okay, this fucker Boba has been wearing a dress for two seasons now. A fucking dress. Okay, like, like what a woman wears. Okay, he wore it in, the, in season two of Mandalorian the entire time. And now he's wearing it again. No rocket pack, no cape, but he's wearing a dress. <sighs> yeah, don't like the don't like the outfit at all. It's kind of taking me out of it. So anyway, he goes to this um, this gambling casino place on there, and it's Jennifer Beals is the Twilight the Twilik. That's I guess that she's the head of it, whatever. Yes, Jennifer Beals, flash dancers of Jennifer Beals. By the way, did you know that she's African American? Because I just recently found I had no idea she was African American. I had no idea at all. Uh, I saw my bodyguard recently, the one from 1980. Um, with uh, Adam Baldwin uh, and the kid from uh, from Meatballs, you know, it takes place in Chicago. I was a little kid back then. I remember that movie. When I was a little kid. Joan Cusack's in it. Matt Dillon is the bully. You know. Anyway, uh, well, Jennifer Beals had a small role in that movie, and she clearly looked African American in that movie. And then I had to look at the crest. That looks that black girl looks just like Jennifer Beals. And I looked. Oh, well, sure enough, yeah, Jennifer's a black guy. I had no idea. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. She, she's playing some orange skinned Twilik in this. I guess she's in she's the in charge of the casino, or whatever. Now, if you remember, the Twi'leks were like kind of like uh, like prostitutes, you could say, or they were like sex slaves or something. Uh, remember, Jabba had had one, and then he murdered her when she tried to get free, and then he tried to turn Leia into one. These Twi'leks are, are are these attractive women with either green skin or blue skin or whatever color skin, as long as it's not Caucasian skin, and um, and they got those big those those tentacles that come out of their head. Okay, well, of course they have this here too in this casino. But now they have introduced male Twi'leks. So now there's also male sex slaves. Okay, and they've got the ripped abs and the, and the muscles and it's just like, and of course they're subservient, yes, whatever you want. I'm here to serve you, you know? Like, what the f it's like a gay bar. Like, come on. Like, you just, you know, I'm sorry, but, but, but a, a barely naked Man, and then a barely, a barely naked woman, you think one thing, okay? A barely naked man, you think another thing, okay? <laughs> All right? It's, I can't help it. It's just in our culture. It's the Western culture, you know? And I'm like, okay, so now they have male sex slaves in Star Wars. Oh, come on. Okay, I'm starting to see the, the, the politics creeping up here, okay? I know they've been creeping up a little bit, but now you're like putting it in our face. You're expecting us not to pay attention to that, to not notice that. Like, they never had that before, okay? This is like, no, 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 no. No, I'm, I'm already not liking the direction this is going. But anyway, uh, Jennifer Beals tells him, hey, oh, you know, yes, we will pray you our tribute. You're the new you're the new job of the hood, you know? And then uh, they get their money, uh, and they put it in his helmet, and then they're walking out of there, and they get ambushed by a bunch of Parqua guys in masks and, and force field shields, and they get attacked. And I'm going to tell you, Okay, Boba Fett and his partner, they get taken out pretty easily. Like, he tries to fight them, but he tries to fight off these, these guys the way you and I would try to fight off somebody. Like, you know, we're trying, but we're not doing any sort of, sort of superhuman martial arts or shit, you know. We're just trying. And, of course, he gets defeated and he's injured. I guess he already had some injuries. That's why he was in the back of the tank. But he gets taken out pretty easily. And this is supposed to be the most dangerous man in the fucking universe, you know. And the guy, most dangerous bounty hunter in the galaxy. And he's, he's getting his ass kicked pretty easily. Pretty easily. He, he looks out of shape. He looks tired. He 
He looks like he's like, you know, he's got arthritis. You know, he looks like he gets winded very easily. Like he's out of breath or, you know, after a couple of, try to cut with a couple punches, he's like, you know, like he doesn't seem like a threat. Okay. And he was like that in the past, but there was an excuse for that. He just got out of the Starlight pit. He barely survived that. He's hungry. He's dehydrated, whatever. I get it. You know, but there's no excuse for it now, you know, and he just can't really fight. You know, and, and anyway, they beat him up. Some of them, they, they've managed, uh, his guards, the pig guards help him out. They manage to take out a few of them and the, they take out the rest and the rest run away. He kills one of them that's run away. May goes after the other two. She kills one, takes the other one hostage so they can interrogate him and find out who's trying to kill him. He knows who's trying to kill him, but like, like he wants to know who, you know, how, how to deal with this guy. And, uh, and that's pretty much how it ends. So, uh. You know, uh, like I said, Boba Fett right now, maybe maybe they're, they're going to play us for a trick. Because I know, I know that John Favreau wrote this with Dave Filoni, and they know they're Star Wars. Okay, Unlike Kathleen Kennedy and Ryan Johnson and J.J. Abrams, they don't know they're Star Wars. These guys know they're Star Wars. So I'm expecting they, get, they, got, they're, they got a point to everything that they're showing us right now. There's going to be uh, some sort of a, a pay for it, you know, like some sort of reprieve for what, what they're doing right now. Um, uh, I know Robert Rodriguez, uh, the Robert Rodriguez, uh, directed this episode. So I know it was directed very well. Uh, I like the Sarlacc stuff, but I don't like how Boba Fett is right now. You know, he's tired, hungry, and he's walking around like he's got arthritis. You know, like your uncle, you know, the one who's out of shape and always in pain. And always got to take his Ben Gay, you know, and his medications. You know, the kind of uncle that his knee swells up when the weather changes. Like, oh, man, it's going to be summer soon. You know, that kind of thing, like, oh, thank God you don't have back problems like I do. Oh, oh. you know, like that. Like, this Boba Fett's coming across like that. Like, okay, dude, you, you don't seem like a threat to anybody. You're supposed to be a dangerous bounty hunter in the universe. You don't seem like it. Okay, you don't seem like it. Maybe that's going to change. Maybe he just needs to be in the back to tank more. Maybe he needs to be more motivated, you know? Um, and he needs to take that fucking dress off. Take the fucking dress off. Get the fucking rocket pack back on. And get the goddamn cake back on. All right? There's a reason this stuff is in there. There's a reason they created him with that stuff. Okay? Not with a fucking dress. Do you see a fucking dress here? No, you don't. Okay? So anyway, hopefully it gets better. All right? Because I am a big Boba Fett fan. All right. All right. Thank you for watching.